Hi there, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's Shelly Levi. And tonight, I wanted to jump on and chat a little bit more about fibromyalgia and some of the most common causes or flares that can occur with this type of autoimmune disease. And kind of triggered for me because um, I've noticed a few changes again taking place and I was trying to figure out um, what was different and figured it out. <laughs> so I figured what I'd do is I would share uh, going through some of these five major causes and give you a little bit more of um, what can trigger them and some tips that can help you maybe try to avoid some of them or even get through them a little bit quicker. So if you are a person out there who deals with fibromyalgia, you already know how debilitating this disease can be. Um, when a fibromyalgia flare occurs, it can be very unpredictable and it can, um, Gosh, it, 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 it just can happen when you least expect it. And so it can throw a lot of people off and really it has a way of kind of dictating what you can and can't do day in and day out. Hey, Jesse, thanks for jumping on tonight. And so what a flare is, is a flare is this massive intense pain that takes over the body, the muscles, the joints, and it can be literally from head to toe. To toe. Um, it can vary of levels of degree. Some people, they can't even get out of bed when they're dealing with a flare. Others, you can get out of bed, but you find it very difficult just to go through some basic tasks. And that's usually where I fall. I can get out of bed, but I have a very difficult time getting through some of my days and getting through some of the basic tasks. And for me, when I'm dealing with a flare, um, it tends to occur mostly in the evenings that um, it settles in. And I find that if I keep myself busy throughout the day, sometimes I don't think about it. Um, but of course, at night, that's where everything kind of catches up. So I wanted to share with you, though, like I said, some of the top five things that can cause this to flare. And if you have awareness of some of this, you can like be one up and be prepared a little bit better to get through some of this. So the first one up, and I got my notes here, travel, number one, traveling. So this is sitting for long periods of time, um, carrying a lot of heavy luggage, changes in altitude. These things can set off your fibromyalgia. So things you can do when you're traveling to try to avoid some of this is try to find nonstop flights, and try to get them during the day hours. So you're not getting up super early in the morning or flying late at night. Um, that could cause maybe added stress or fatigue to the body. Um, maybe pick an aisle seat that you can get up easily and stand when you need to. And the other thing is maybe bring a pillow and of course some healthy snacks along because you just never know when you may get delayed in an airport. So. Number two, weather. Now, some people don't think that this can um, affect the body with fibromyalgia, but I disagree. <laughs> My daughter will disagree with this. Um, changes in season. You, if you've got a, like a big change in season where you live, that can be a struggle. Extreme, hot, or cold. Now. I live in Arizona here. I find that the heat, for me, the extreme heat has not um, bothered me too much, but I know a lot of people really have a tough time with extreme heat. I definitely struggled with the extreme cold. That one did numbers on me. And there's a lot of people that are even um, sensitive to the air pressure, like when a low pressure system comes in or a high pressure system comes in, 
they will get a lot more achy, fatigue, pain. They'll start to feel until that system passes through. So there's a lot to be said about the weather. Unfortunately, the weather we can't control. So, you know, sometimes it's paying attention to what's coming. Um, if there are some systems that are coming in that could affect you, uh, maybe making sure you're getting enough rest the night before. Um, if you're living I, like this, I lived in Minnesota, I moved. <laughs> I got the hell out of there and got somewhere warmer because the, the extreme cold, it didn't work for me. It just didn't work for me. It was too painful. So number three, overexertion. And this is my most recent one that kind of popped up here because I added some more intense workouts into my routine. I thought my body was ready for, um, but it's kind of fighting me on it. So other things that you may be, when you're in this category of overexertion would be like um, long work days. If you're working a lot of 12, 14 hour days, a lot of multiple late nights in a row. Um, maybe you're on a vacation, trips. How many of you go on some of those tours and it's like a, an all day long tour and you're walking like 10 miles in that day on some of these tours? That can be a lot for someone with fibromyalgia. Um, and I already said too, intense workouts. So things you can do to kind of offset this is less intense workouts, ideally ones that don't involve impact. So maybe something like yoga or a Pilates. Um, allow for more recovery time in between workouts. And actually, I think that's what I need to do. I just need to allow myself more recovery time in between my workouts and not try to do multiple intense workouts back to back days. Epsom salt bath, if you've already flared up, can help. And then again, it's just slowing down. If you've got a day that's filled with a ton of tasks, try to break up those tasks. Or maybe if you know you've got a busy week, break up the tasks throughout the week so you don't have these late nights back to back. Number four, and this is a big one for me, stress. I'd like to think that I manage stress well, but my body always tells me differently. So um, there are studies out there. Stress wreaks havoc on the body. It has been shown to cause an increase in inflammation. And when there's an increase in inflammation in the body, things are not going to work right. Um, for someone with fibromyalgia, that means increased pain then. It means increased pain in the muscles, in the joints, increased fatigue. So um, the big thing you can do, the, the stress can be coming from work. It can be coming from relationships, maybe a loss of a loved one. Um, or maybe you're one of those people that has just way too much on your plate. So here's some tips. Learn to say no. Yes, that was me. I had to start learning to say no if I've had too much. And it's okay. It's okay to say no. You can do it in a polite way and just say, hey, you know, thank you so much for thinking of me. But right now I've already am extended beyond you know, my means and um, yeah, then you just kindly decline, you know, what they're asking you to do. So other things you can do is limit your time with some of maybe those stressful people in your life. Or for me, I'm really, um, I take in a lot of energies from shows. Like if there's certain shows on TV um, that, are disturbing to me I can't do it I'm just like all right I need to turn this this is too disturbing I can't watch this it, it causes me stress and anxiety to a certain degree so other things you can do is meditation maybe journal write down some of the things that are going through your mind some of your thoughts some of your stresses some of your frustration I just guided one of my clients to have a bitch journal because she's really struggling with a certain professor in her life that she is challenged by in a particular class. And so writing, and she can't change it. She's not gonna change him, she's not gonna change the class, it's just one of those things. So I told her to create a bitch journal, you know, get all that frustration out and down on paper and release it. So, and another thing that I did 
when I had one of my worst fibromyalgia flares is I did CBD oil. I turned to CBD oil to help my body to calm and to relax and to reduce that inflammation that that stress was causing so my pain levels would drop down and my fatigue would start to improve. So that was a game changer for me is the CBD oil. Now number five, diet on this one. Fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disorder, meaning that your body is attacking your itself. And so you need to be, um, some things I shouldn't say you need to be, some things you might want to consider is how your food is affecting your body. There are a lot of foods that tend to cause added inflammation in the body. And again, when you have that added inflammation, the fibromyalgia pain will increase and so will those fatigue levels. The most common foods that tend to cause that inflammation is gluten, dairy, sugar. And most of that's coming from your processed foods. So when you start to eliminate those things out of your diet, there's a lot of people that will see a huge improvement with their fibromyalgia and managing it when they remove that out of their diet. So what you can do, again, keep a journal of some of the things that you're eating to see if there's certain trigger foods that you're having. Because maybe it goes beyond the gluten, dairy, and the sugar that I mentioned. Maybe you've got some other stuff going on like corn or eggs that could be a trigger or an inflammatory food for you. So keeping that diary, you can help kind of pinpoint some of those times when you're having what you've eaten and if a flare started to occur. Um, and also, like I said, consider trying to remove some of these from your diet. Now, I know that can be challenging. So um, if you are a person that would like to have a little bit more help in, say, removing some gluten and dairy from your diet, I've got a wonderful seven-day gluten-free meal plan that I can drop right over to you if you're wanting something to kind of help you get started and maybe see if you notice a difference in how your days go in managing that fibromyalgia. So if that's something that you're wanting or could use, is that seven day gluten-free meal plan, just message me, drop a comment below that you would like that meal plan or message me, private message me, and I'll shoot that your way, no problem. All right, I hope these tips help tonight in some of these five major causes of dealing with fibromyalgia because again if you can get on top of some of these things or be able to create that awareness of some of the things that could potentially trigger this then maybe you can get through some of these episodes a little bit quicker and a little bit easier all right if you found this to be valuable please share this especially if you know of someone who is dealing with fibromyalgia and could really use some added help right now. All right, thank you guys for jumping on, catching the live or catching the replay here tonight. And I will be seeing you guys again soon. All right, bye-bye.